Uh, hi. Uh, this talk is about auto-scaling uh, elastic Kubernetes infrastructure in the presence of stateful applications uh, that use Proxeles, gRPC, and Istio. Uh, my name is Sanjay Pujare, and I am an engineer in Google Cloud. And, and I'm Kostin Manolake, uh, working on Istio, also at Google. So how many of you attended the gRPC maintenance talk yesterday? A show of hands? OK. Um, so we'll start off with uh, a description of Kubernetes elastic and auto-scalable infrastructure. I'll then talk about the problems faced by stateful applications in such an environment. Uh, we'll look at implementing a stateful session affinity that's needed for stateful applications. Uh, I'll discuss an approach that's based on uh, cookies uh, for stateful session affinity and how it is implemented in the Proxilus gRPC library. Uh, session training and canary deployment are important aspects of this discussion because they affect uh, stateful session affinity, uh, so we'll touch upon those. We'll then move on to a real-life use case from Broadcom uh, who are going to be using this feature in their uh, WSS software. Kostin will talk about how to use this feature using the new Gateway API and the status of our implementation. And hopefully, we'll have a few minutes uh, towards the end for uh, Q&A. Okay, um, it's Friday. I suspect you already heard about uh, Kubernetes auto-scaling and you know how awesome it is. Um, auto-scaling allows Kubernetes to scale up your uh, pods to start new pods when traffic increases. It reduces the uh, number of pods when traffic goes down. Um, it's wonderful, but it has some, some uh, dark corners. There are some, some, some small issues. For example, you know probably that when the pod starts up, you need to wait for, um, for it to warm up before readiness probe is, uh, is passing, so you don't have high latency or errors at startup. Uh, similarly, when, when uh, the pod goes down, there are some, some uh, things you need to be careful about, and, and we'll talk about this a bit in, in, in more details. Um, in, in, in this example, we are showing that, uh, you know, when, when uh, we were focusing on the scale down, and we are showing that um, pods will eventually be killed, and then nodes will be freed up and your application can, can um, you know, optimize the costs and, and, uh, and, and, and support better uh, characteristics. Uh, let's go into, into the details here. Okay. So when DAO scaling happens, there are two things happening. Uh, traffic to existing backends can get shifted uh, even when ring hash load balancing is used and backends with assigned sessions might be removed as part of downscaling. Uh, in this diagram, the load balancer, uh, which is shown in the yellow rectangles, uh, is load balancing traffic to backends running in Kubernetes when the HPA uh, kicks in, which is the horizontal pod autoscaler. The pod N in node two uh, is shut down, which can result in two things. Uh, there is a change in the number of backends, so the load balancer will shift traf traffic to other backends, which is what typically happens you know, when a ring hash load balancer is used. And another issue is that for the backend that was removed, all of the traffic that was supposed to go to it uh, will now need to go to another backend. And maybe to maintain stateful affinity or session affinity, the backend should not have been removed, uh, or maybe it was removed too soon. Uh, so how do we fix it? Uh, so I mentioned the ring hash load balancer, uh, which is quite common, uh, and I assume most of you know how it works. Uh, let me explain its limitations. So on the left-hand side, uh, we have five backends uh, on the ring. When a request with the hash value of uh, 111 comes in, the load balancer sends the request to the server with hash value 139 because that is closest on the ring. Uh, so far, so good. Now, a new server gets added and its hash value is 115. Uh, you can see it sits between the server 74 and 139. 
Now, a request with the same hash value, uh, that is the request in the same session, uh, comes in. The ring hash load balancer is going to send it uh, to this new server 115 because it is closer to 111. And session affinity is broken. Uh, this happens because uh, session affinity here is stateless. Uh, we need something uh, stateful, something that uh, remembers uh, where we sent uh, previous requests in that session. Uh, so ring hash doesn't work. We need uh, stateful load balancing for our uh, stateful application. Uh, in this diagram, uh, we have a hash table in our load balancer which maps each client session to a backend. Uh, you can say the session is assigned uh, to a backend. Imagine an actual proxy load balancer doing this. It will have mem memory requirement proportional to active client sessions, and there is no easy way to remove entries uh, because the load balancer may not be application aware and does not know when sessions end. Also, multiple load balancer proxy instances may need to synchronize their data. So this is hard to scale and is expensive. Uh, so we use a cookie to maintain that state. The load balancer issues a cookie after routing the first RPC in a session and the cookie is returned by the client uh, in all the subsequent RPCs in that session. Uh, the cookie basically encodes the backend address, uh, which is the IP plus port, and all these subsequent RPCs, uh, the load balancer just decodes the cookie and gets the backend address and routes the RPC uh, to that address. Uh, it's that simple. Uh, we get the client to maintain the state for us. Uh, so here is a, uh, a picture, uh, a diagrammatic explanation of the feature. The first request is sent by the load balancer to server two, which is picked by the load balancer based on some load balancing algorithm. Once the response to that request shown here as R RSP1 uh, is received by the load balancer, it adds a cookie to that response. The cookie value is nothing but the server two IP plus port that is, which is way 64 encoded. So RSP1 is received by the client and the embedded cookie is used by the client in all the subsequent requests uh, in the session, shown here as REQ2 uh, through REQN. Uh, the load balancer just decodes the cookie value and uses that value, which is the backend IP plus port, and sends those requests uh, to server two, thereby maintaining session affinity. Uh, with proxyless gRPC, the load balancing uh, functionality is implemented inside the gRPC library, which is inside the client application process. Uh, gRPC performs load balancing of the first RPC and adds cookie to the first response received. Client application copies the cookie from the first response into all the subsequent RPCs. Uh, and gRPC uses the cookie to route the RPC uh, to the appropriate backend, uh, which is server two in this uh, diagram. Uh, Istio uses XTS to provide the necessary configuration to uh, gRPC. Uh, which typically consists of uh, uh, the service and route level information and the cookie name, a cookie time to live, uh, and all those things. Uh, Istio also uh, collects all the backend uh, information like list of backends, including the clusters they belong to, and sends it to gRPC, uh, which uh, gRPC uses to perform load balancing and maintain cookie-based session affinity. Uh, but what about the uh, second problem uh, we mentioned earlier as part of downscaling? Uh, so that part of the diagram is uh, shown here. The problem is that uh, pods or backends are removed whether or not they have assigned sessions. Uh, after removal, the RPCs will be routed uh, to a different backend, uh, pod two in this example, uh, and session affinity is broken. Um, to solve this, we create a new state for a pod. Uh, let's call it draining. 
A, a draining state pod is scheduled for removal, but not removed immediately. Uh, instead, that pod is kept around for it to drain its sessions. Uh, once all its sessions uh, are gone, the pod will be shut down and removed. Uh, during the draining state, it will continue to receive RPCs of its assigned sessions. Uh, so let's see how this is implemented. Okay. Okay, so in Kubernetes, um, we have uh, put termination, which is um, generally in, has three phases. Uh, first, when the autoscaler or, or uh, the user decides to terminate a pod, um, the um, shutdown hook, uh, pre-stop hook is, uh, is called, which is some custom code that you, you control. And the pre-stop pre hook may coordinate the application uh, with application itself to verify if you have pending sessions. It may do all kinds of fancy, you know, safe state to, to migrate to a different uh, pod, uh, or it just can sleep and, and wait until you expect your sessions to expire. Um, when the pre-stop hook terminates, the, the pod will receive the, the SIG hub first, and then SIG term first, and then uh, SIG kill to actually kill the pod and, and uh, terminate the container. Um, Kubernetes also has a terminating grace period that, that allows you to control the entire, uh, entire duration of the, of the termination to give time to, to the application to drain the pods and to control the, the shutdown process. Let's see how Istio implements this and, and how it, it uh, takes advantage of, uh, of this feature. Each, Istio is, is watching Kubernetes endpoint slices, and in the endpoint slices, Kubernetes will, will mark the pods that are terminating and tell Istio that, uh, that we need to do to, to notify all the clients, gRPC or Envoys, about the pod being in this uh, drain state. Um, Istio will, will uh, include, will update the IP address of the pod that is terminating, mark it as draining, and Envoy and Proxyless gRPC are going to take this state and switch the behavior of the load balancer so that all uh, new requests will skip this IP, this, uh, this backend, and if you have a cookie, it will still go to, this, um, to, the, to the pod that expects to, to receive the session. Um, So that's, that takes care of the draining, uh, but there is another problem which affects, um, affects um, persistent sessions, which is uh, the canary deployment or, or traffic shifting. This example is using, uh, it's a Istio example, but we are using the new gateway API uh, that you probably have heard in a few sessions before. Uh, we are using the HTTP route. We create two services, let's say version one and version two. You are rolling out version two, you want to send only 10% of the traffic to, to, to the new version to verify that it works and in case of problems to roll back. Um, how does it impact uh, persistent sessions? Um, since uh, we are um, shifting traffic, if you have a cookie, even if, if the request uh, would normally be affected by the 90%, 10% shift, the session will bypass this, uh, this um, configuration and it will still go to the original uh, backend that, that, uh, where the session is expected to go. Um, okay. your chair, yeah. uh, as you can see in this diagram, uh, the first RPC of the session is sent to cluster V1 and the response from the backend V1 S1 is annotated by the load balancer with a cookie indicating uh, the backend address. However, for the next RPC, REQ2 and possibly others in the session, uh, the load balancer picks cluster V2 based on the cluster weights. And if those RPCs are sent to cluster V2, uh, session affinity is broken because the backend V1 S1 obviously does not exist in that cluster. So how do we fix this? Uh, we solve the problem by including the cluster name in the cookie. Uh, we show here a sample cookie value which shows cluster V1 as part of the uh, value. The first RPC is processed by backend V1 S1 that is part of cluster V1. Uh, 
the load balancer includes a cluster name in the cookie that is added to RSP1 and the response that is sent back to the client. The client includes the cookie in all the subsequent RPCs and the load balancer extracts the cluster name from the cookie and selects that cluster instead of using the weight-based cluster, cluster selection algorithm. And within that cluster, it selects the backend included in the cookie and session affinity is maintained. Uh, of course, provided the cluster and the backend within that cluster are still part of the configuration and are healthy. Uh, so after having gone through the technical details of the implementation, let me talk about the use case uh, to provide some context for why we are doing this. Uh, I mentioned uh, Broadcom earlier. Uh, so uh, Semantic Enterprise Division is part of a Broadcom software. And uh, this division, uh, I mean, the software is used to secure customers' internet access globally, uh, providing smooth service to millions of users. Uh, some of the larger uh, customers have over 300,000 deployed users. Uh, so their solution called WSS, which is a web security solution, is deployed on Google Cloud Platform in all of the available regions around the world. Customers' uh, internet-facing traffic is securely routed uh, to WSS services. Uh, the policy Evaluation microservice is a core component of the WSS uh, solution data path. The service as a whole must handle tens of thousands of requests per second from various enforcement uh, agents on the data path. These agents submit series of requests on a per customer transaction basis and the state of those uh, related requests must be efficiently correlated when evaluating customer configured security policies. Uh, with such high RPS requirements and the need to maintain uh, a state across RPCs, the impact of uh, storing the state external to the service instance becomes a bottleneck. Uh, moreover, keeping a coherent uh, shared state across instances is impractical. Uh, most RPCs uh, actually mutate the state uh, maintained per a customer transaction. So the classic model of sharding or consistent hashing algorithms would require a partial state resync anytime the number of serving parts changes. Uh, if we can efficiently maintain pod local state while preserving correct and consistent request routing, we can simplify the state management. Uh, strong session affinity, uh, also known as stateful session affinity, enables such consistent request routing uh, to pods without much complexity on the load balancer and uh, the service side. Uh, this also allows the clients to collaboratively provide hints to the routing logic such that we can achieve greater internal service caching. Uh, stateful services introduce additional requirements when using some of the common paradigms such as Canary and HPA-based scaling or rolling upgrades. Since the serving pods have stayed, the design needs to be cognizant of that and accommodate routing existing sessions correctly and draining the state properly. So. Okay. Um, it provides um, a lot of features for load balancing and a uh, good framework for advanced use cases like this one. Uh, and it now it's include uh, stateful session. It always had uh, traffic shifting, draining, and, and load balancing support. Uh, and VOI is a very powerful proxy and, and um, it's, it's great for most use cases, but it does add a bit of performance overhead uh, that um, impedes the adoption of proxy-based service mesh in such use cases where ultra low latency or high requests per second are uh, required. Uh, Broadcom has been working with, uh, with Google and with Istio to um, 
enhance and formalize the support in Istio for stateful session affinity, and also with uh, the gRPC team to add support for uh, stateful sessions and, and Istio to the gRPC framework. Um, this slide shows some of the performance evaluations that uh, they did for, uh, for this. Uh, it, like all benchmarks, you need some context. Um, this is obviously using their super specialized applications that, uh, that is you know, optimized. It's C++, it's uh, using uh, in-memory only. And on the Istio side, we are using a kind of untuned, you know, we, 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 we don't uh, increase the CPU, we, CPU, we don't turn off features. But um, as you can see, the 30,000 QPS are usually not achievable with, uh, with Istio out of box in, in, in this scenario. And the latency is, is uh, slightly better with, with gRPC and it meets uh, their, uh, their needs. This is not a typical use case. I mean, it's only for applications that, that have those kind of strict uh, requirements. But uh, when you have to, that's, that's probably that's one of the best options you have. Uh, let's meet, let me talk about the status of this feature um, and, and all the related sub-features we, we covered here. We added this feature to the gRPC, and um, there is a design that is, that is linked here uh, on the gRPC side. Uh, and we had persistent sessions already and, and, and draining, um, and that was used in gRPC, so we share the same, uh, the same concepts and same, same configuration. Um, we had to provide some API to enable this, this, um, this feature in Istio. Um, after long discussions, we, we added a label, but uh, that's not going to be the final API. We are waiting for the gateway uh, working group to formalize a common API that other vendors will, will hopefully use to implement uh, persistent sessions. Um, Istio, as, you, as, as I mentioned, Istio is one of the many implementations that support the, the gateway API. And um, we are working, working with uh, the working group to, 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 to formalize this, uh, this feature. Uh, we also have, Google also has another implementation of gateway API called Traffic Director. And they also support uh, session affinity, but in a slightly different way. And, and I'll, I'll provide an example a bit later. Uh, by now, I suspect I don't need to ask uh, if you know what Gateway API is. There are quite a few talks about it. Um, we are using it in Istio to, to model L7 um, traffic. And uh, we are using uh, the Gateway HTTP route. There is a gRPC route as well. Um, we implemented this probably a few releases back. Um, and, and it has been available. Um, and we are planning to make it the default and recommended way, at least for, for gRPC, because um, it's, it's a very good fit with, uh, with the gRPC feature set. Um, we are also using the exact same API in, um, in uh, the GKE Gateway Controller, Traffic Director, and as I mentioned, many other vendors are, are uh, adopting it. Um, in Gateway API, there is a concept called uh, vendor extension, which allow each vendor to define its own specific uh, features before they are standardized or maybe for a long term. Um, this example here is, is how persistent is implemented with, with uh, Google um, JKE and, and, and Traffic Director. Um, you will notice that all, all vendor extensions are, are, uh, have a target ref, which is, uh, which is a service where, where they apply. And you can define different configuration for that, uh, that particular service. Um, once the, the working group will, will define the proper API, it will, will also support the new API and both Istio and Traffic Director and, and JK Gateway Controller and everyone will, will um, switch to the new API. Um, Questions? I think we managed to say five minutes. Yeah, okay. Any questions? Okay, looks like no questions. Yeah, Hi. Okay. Yes. Uh, 
I already approached you yesterday. I don't know if you recall me. Uh, we kind of have the opposite problem where we have uh, HPA autoscaling up and we have the connections affinity to like the few existing parts that were before. Uh, do you know of any approaches to kind of spread the load um, on these persistent connections? And like we would prefer killing the connections rather than keeping them, right? It's kind okay. of like, uh, I don't know, it's kind of orthogonal. Uh, yeah, I know. I think you posted that question on Slack as well, right? I uh, didn't. Okay. Uh, oh, that's yes, right. that's something that uh, we are... Okay, maybe you, you want to answer? Uh, yes, uh, that's uh, something that is a bit complicated because uh, normally with persistent sessions, the definition of the feature is that if you have a persistent session, it needs to keep going there. But you can delete the cookie. And if you delete the cookie, then you will go to the normal load balancer. But that's something that your application needs to do. It's not, it cannot be automated because we cannot guess. Other questions? Yes. You can use them. Hi. Um, I have a question that, uh, so if the uh, user session, it may be one hour, 24 hours, the support will be stuck for 24 hours, right? You cannot be terminated during that time. Uh, that's a feature, not a bug. I mean, we want if you if you want your session to last for 24 hours, you you will keep it for 24 hours because what that's what the user and is scanning down is uh, very problematic for the cluster and application because it's we cannot scale down immediately or in the short time. It's not very really responsive. Uh, one thing you can do, I mean, you can try to move the state to a different. I mean, to to to. Um, Transfer yeah. state. So, so is it is like a work around for very chase, you know, stateful applications. It's not very long, uh, very uh, uh, night designs. Or what do you think? Uh, okay, if uh, if uh, there is something called terminating grace period. So once Kubernetes or the user wants to reclaim the pod, usher down the pod, it goes into this terminating uh, state, and there is a timeout for that. Let's say one hour. So after one hour, regardless of the states, the sessions, or anything it will kill it, and so that's, that way. I mean, of course, the application will get impacted because the, you know, you kind of, you are killing the sessions without taking care of them properly, but that addresses yeah. your problem so at it least. It means that well, well, from the user point of view, you, I log in and then if I, my support who was many of my session was terminating what an hour, I have to log in again, Let, right? Let's, uh, if you can stop by by this new yeah. boot, we can discuss in more details. Uh, the yeah. Yes. Thank you for the session. I would like to ask about this uh, proxyless model. Is it something that will be developed uh, for gRPC, so there will be no need for like Envoy, or, uh, or what, what does it mean? Yeah, okay, that's a good question, because so we have actually uh, implemented proxyless gRPC almost three years ago. And it has been working in Google Cloud with the traffic director that he mentioned. Uh, it has been, it is a supported GA feature for the last two and a half years at least, if not three years. So recently, we, I mean, even with Istio, it has been working for the last one or two years informally, and we are in the process of doing a GA of that feature. So yes, to answer your questions, Proxy GRPC with Istio without Envoy Proxy, is a thing and it will be a proper re released feature in maybe towards the end of this year. So it's like it Envoy It only works with Go and C++ and also Java. Sorry. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, just one, one comment. Uh, it, is, it, it doesn't support all the Istio features and it's intended for advanced users that have this kind of uh, latency requirements. So it's still probably, if you want to take advantage of all Istio features, probably still good to use the sidecar. But mm -hmm. if you are in this scenario, then, then proxyless, it's, it's a very good choice. Uh, okay, thank you. On the gRPC uh, GitHub repo, there is a, a, a file, a page, that talks about XGS features supported by gRPC, and that is, we try to keep it up to date, so you can, uh, you can see there which features uh, that Envoy supports are also supported by gRPC, and based on that, you can. Okay, decide. thank you. Hello. Uh, yeah, I have a similar question to what other people have asked. Uh, it's uh, related to that it will become kind of a sticky session, right? Uh, when we implement that. And uh, what I was thinking, if someone wants and they know that it's kind of a sticky session, they will try to flood them uh, with more requests because uh, as the session is still there, so how, how do we deal with that? It will always go to just one server and it can take it down, so. 
but that is a feature. I mean, you so typically at, in the use case that we talked about, the client will actually end the session. So the client knows when the session is ended. So it will send something like an end session RPC. Okay. And at that point, the backend will actually know that it doesn't have to maintain that session anymore. So ultimately, over a period of time, let's say two hours or whatever, the backend will get rid of all the sessions and it can then be uh, shut down as part of scale down. So yeah, but, uh, it's really something the application and the infrastructure need to work together, right? Correct, but uh, in the meanwhile, uh, if someone needs to exploit it, is it not dangerous? Oh yeah, that's true. In terms uh -huh. of exploitation and all, it's possible. Let's discuss, we are out of time here, I think, and, uh -huh. and let's discuss it at Istio Booth yeah, yeah, yeah. on the other side. Okay, there. okay. <laughs>